Hi everyone, this is Ashwin here. In this video, we are going to see how to perform transfer learning using a pre-trained model. So transfer learning will be very helpful if you want to uh, reuse uh, some uh, pre-trained uh, model. So this will be uh, very helpful uh, and it will uh, reduce the computation time and we will also get the result uh, uh, quickly uh, compared to training the model from scratch. So this will be uh, commonly used uh, by now because uh, for text data or any image data, we will uh, mostly use the pre-trained model uh, just to save up uh, some time and the uh, computation power. So for this, I'm going to use the same uh, MNIST uh, data set. If you uh, don't see the previous video for how to perform data augmentation, you can uh, click on the right top corner in order to see that uh, video. So I'm using the same code um, as I did in the previous video. So this will just uh, load the data set and it will just uh, reshape the image. For using the pre-trained model, uh, we have to uh, reshape the image into like uh, three dimension. So the pre-trained model supports because all the pre-trained models supports only uh, like um, RGB channel image. So currently we have a grayscale, but we can change that. So let's run this and uh, the low data set is loaded. Now here we'll just reshape to like only a uh, two dimension. And uh, now we will add convert data to three channels. So what I'm going to do is X train equals NP dot stack of X train X train comma multiplies by three because we have to like multiplies by uh, three times and axis equals minus one. So do the same for X test. So now that's done. Uh, let's check the shape of the data again. So run this, run this. Now you can able to see we have um, uh, 60,000 samples with the uh, three channel uh, image. We can uh, use this for the pre-trained model. And I have a train generator and a val generator. So for validation, we don't need to augment uh, anything, but for training, we will augment a uh, few things. And as I already said, this we won't need. Other than that, we will just uh, use as it is. And uh, here I'll just uh, change the batch size to 512. Um, so my GPU can handle that. And I'm also shuffling the data for uh, train iterator. And for validation, I'm not shuffling anything. So this is the default. Let's run this. Now let's use the pre-trained models. So for this, we have to import few modules. So now uh, from tensorflow dot keras dot applications dot restnet 50 import restnet 50. So for this, I'm going to use uh, restnet 50 because this is like a uh, we do, we are not using like a full dimension image. It's like 28 cross 28. It's like a small image and the data set is also small. So this neural network is sufficient. So for this, I'm going to import this. And after that, we have to customize our model. For that, I'm going to import sequential layer. So these things we will usually import uh, uh, during all the uh, creation of neural networks. So tensorflow dot keras dot layers import dense dense. Okay, run this. Now let's create the model. So model equals sequential. Now add the pre-trained model. Model dot add of restnet fifty of include top false. So this will just remove the prediction layer, or else we will be getting like a thousand uh, classes prediction layer. We don't need that. We have to customize that. And pulling that will be I'm using uh, average. You can also set like min or max uh, anything you want. 
and weights weights equals i will use the image net uh, weights so the data in the image uh, image net uh, so there will be a uh, image net uh, is like a large image data set uh, trained on this particular uh, model so i'm going to load the weights directly now add fully connected layers fully connected layers with output now model dot add off i will add a dense layer with uh, fight well with activation activation equals relu and output layer i think i'll just add it directly model dot add dense of 10 so we have like 10 classes uh, for the mnis data set that's why activation equals softmax because this is a categorical uh, output softmax and uh, you can also use dropout layer if you want but i'm gonna leave as it is so after that um set resnet layers not trainable as i already said we don't need to train uh, the resnet lay layers because it's already trained so i'm gonna set that as false so layers of model dot layers of zero dot trainable equals false so we have like a, uh, this is like a list so model model uh, layers of zero uh, it indicates the whole uh, layers inside the resnet so this is like layers of one and this is of layers of two so i'm just setting this is as a false and uh, i can also say model dot summary to display it so this will just load the model and i forgot to do one more thing uh, we have to import from tensorflow dot keras dot utils import to categorical so this is one more module we have to import uh, to convert the output data to category white train equals to categorical of white train and white test equals to categorical of white test okay we have already run this run this again okay now you can able to see this is the complete rest net it has so many parameters but i didn't set it as trainable and uh, here you can able to see we have like this number of parameters trainable this is the total trainable parameters and these are like non-trainable if you include all these things means it will take a long time for train that's why i'm just set the trainable as false you can also fine tune it later if you want by setting it as true but for now we won't do that next we will compile the model so model dot compile of optimizer i'll just set it as adam and uh, loss function i'll set it as categorical cross entropy and matrix i will use accuracy accuracy model is compiled let's train the model so model dot fit off we have the train iterator and val iterator i'll just pass it uh, for the training directly train iterator epochs 10 so usually we will train around 100 in order to reach the val accuracy around 98 let's see how it performs uh, with like 10 epochs itself and we will have validation data and here i will specify val iterator i think that is enough let's run this so this will uh, uh, train the model for uh, 10 epochs and we will see the uh, results uh, here and uh, 
yeah, I think uh, this will be about how you can able to use the pre-trained model. So this will save you a lot of time. Uh, we are just training only the last uh, two layers. That is the fully connected layers uh, because that is uh, helpful for uh, doing the actual classification. Other uh, feature ext extraction will be done by the ResNet layers. So that's the idea. And uh, we can able to see the accuracy. Training accuracy is 38. Val accuracy is around uh, 74 in the first epoch itself. We won't be getting this kind of accuracy when you are uh, training the model from scratch. Uh, if you want to check that video means you can click on the right top corner in order to see the full project of the MNS data. I already made a, a full pipeline and we already reached 80 in the second epoch itself. Uh, so uh, again, uh, if you are using pre-trained model, don't train it too much. That will uh, uh, do some overfitting even if you added this uh, data augmentation uh, uh, techniques. So this will be data augmentation with the generator. Okay. Now we are oscillating around uh, 80 itself and uh, train accuracy is also increasing. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, for 10 epochs we will just uh, train. If we reach 90 means uh, that will be like a very good result for us. And as I already said you can also fine tune the model uh, later if you want uh, just few things. Uh, let's wait for a minute uh, for, for this to complete. Okay, so the training has been completed. Now we have got an accuracy around like 83%. The validation accuracy is around 85%. As you can able to see, it's like oscillating uh, there. Uh, we have to uh, increase the uh, number of hidden units in the uh, fully connected layer in order to train more. Uh, I think it's a pretty good result for 10 epochs. Uh, if you increase it means uh, it can able to capture more information or you can able to set this uh, trainable to true uh, so it will fine tune uh, other layers as well and this will definitely uh, shoot up your uh, accuracy so that's pretty much it guys this is how you can able to use the pre-trained uh, model um, to train any kind of uh, data set uh, if you have any queries on this video please leave a comment below i will definitely answer those queries and apart from that if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos like this stay tuned for the next video